This is a lone tree in Ireland. It is a white thorn, also known as a hawthorn, that can be found around Ireland as no one will touch this tree or cut it down. When I was a boy I asked my father why he would not cut down a lone tree. He told me that it was bad luck, but no explanation as to why he was given. It was only when I spoke to the old people of my grandparents' generation that they would tell me stories of fairies and curses, for this is a fairy tree. In Irish folklore this tree is a gateway or portal to the other world known as Tirnanog, the mystical realm of the Tua de Danann, who once ruled Ireland before man came. It is guarded by their descendants, the fairy folk known as the Shi. Anyone who harms this tree will be cursed by the fairies and suffer great misfortune. Accidents, illness, cows not producing milk and many other disasters were attributed to someone disturbing the fairies and their tree. The best known fairy trees are on pagan sites, holy wells or large fairy forts. People leave prayers, gifts or personal tokens of some kind attached to the tree branches in hopes of receiving healing, good fortune or having their prayers answered. Some people leave all sorts of things, children's toys, photos, ribbons, messages on scraps of paper and strips of fabric from clothing, all in the hope of receiving a blessing from the fairies. Roads, buildings and other construction have been altered or moved to prevent the destruction or damage of a fairy tree after some would protest. In Tirna Nog, or the land of the young, inhabitants are gifted with everlasting youth, beauty, health and happiness. It was said to be the home of the ancient gods and fairies, but humans are forbidden. Mortals could only enter Tirnanog if they were invited by one of its inhabitants. Tirnanog features in many Irish stories, but the most famous one is about Oisin, son of Finn McCool. Oisin was out hunting with his father's tribe, the Fina, when they noticed something moving across the ocean on a wave. Fearing an invasion, they hurried to the coast and prepared for a battle only to find the most beautiful woman any of them had ever seen, riding a white horse across the sea. She approached the men, introducing herself as Neve, daughter of the god of the sea, from Tirnanog. The men were afraid of her, as they thought she was a fairy woman, but Oshin introduced himself. The two instantly fell in love, but Neve was bound to return to Tirnanog. Unable to bear leaving her beloved Oshin, she invited him to come back with her. Oshin accepted her invitation, leaving his family and fellow warriors behind. Once they crossed back over the sea to the realm of Tirnanog, Oshin received all of the gifts it was famous for. Everlasting beauty, health and of course, the ultimate happiness with his new love. However, he began to miss the family he left behind. So Neve gave him her horse to travel back to see them, but warned he could not touch the ground or he would become mortal again and would never be able to return to Tirnanog. Oshin travelled across the water to his former home, only to find everyone was gone. Eventually he came across three men, so he asked them where his people were. He told them that they had all died many years ago. Realising that time passes much slower in Tirnanog than on Earth, Oshin was devastated and fell to the ground, instantly transforming into an old man. As he had touched the ground, he was unable to travel back to Neve in Tirnanog, and soon after died of a broken heart. Would I ever cut down this tree? Why risk the wrath of the Xi? And besides, Maybe I'll meet a fairy princess and be invited to the other world some day. Most people in modern Ireland pass by these places and know little of what lies beyond. For the magic of old Ireland sleeps now, for the most part. But be careful where you tread. Who knows what could befall you or where your path will end.